Blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. And ye holy North American martyrs, pray for us. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. Amen. Today we have the feast of, as one of our hymns puts it, the martyrs of our own dear land, children. That is to say that they were the uh, first martyrs to die in the territory that would one day become the United States of America or uh, Canada, our neighbor to the north. But in any case, they died upon the American continent. They were missionaries, and they were of the Jesuit order. We call them St. Isaac Job and their companions, the North American Martyrs. What do we usually call an Indian children? Anybody know? We usually refer to an Indian as a brave. What was that? Because the Indians, most of all, cherished bravery as the, as the um, virtue par excellence. They thought that was just the very best thing to be brave. So whether they were hunting a wild animal, and the wilder the Indians, for example, the Iroquois nation, the more they uh, subsisted just on animals which they could hunt, and they didn't have any kind of a more of a peaceful life by farming as other Indians did. So whether they were hunting a wild animal, or whether they were hunting other Indians engaged in warfare, which was a favorite occupation of their time, even as it is for many men still today, they were brave and they didn't care about sacrifice or suffering or personal danger, and they never, ever complained. They had the same kind of attitude the braves did when they were captured by their enemy. It was understood that they would be tortured to death in all probability, and they would be impassive, which meant they wouldn't betray any fear or any emotion, it was for them a point of very high honor. The Indians were curious people, the braves were. That is to say that they had some good virtue, for example, um, they were brave, as I just had said, and they were also very generous and hospitable. But on the other hand, they had terrible faults. Their language was very filthy. They had absolutely no morals, none at all. They would fall into a rage very, very easily. They were very childish when it came to, to many things, and believed deeply in dreams and superstitions. Well, it was these Indians whom the Holy Ghost inspired the Jesuit fathers in the um, 17th century to come over to this new world from France, leave all of their comforts and the, and the life they had at home, and to be missionaries. And they would travel sometimes as far as a thousand miles uh, they even reached um, uh, the northern part of Michigan, for example, Sault Ste. Marie. They went all over that, this whole region, all around the Great Lakes uh, and, and, and into Quebec and Canada, in order to find a soul who would listen to them, patiently work with them, and then try to convert them. And they did make a certain number of converts. St. Jean de Brebeuf, for example, 7,000. He was the first one over and was, in a sense, their natural leader. Um, and it's interesting that Jean de Brebeuf, when he was a Jesuit father, he was given a very easy teaching job because he had tuberculosis. He was considered too sickly to do too much. And then he came over to the New World and he outbraved the, the brave. St. Jean de Brebeuf was very, very brave during the whole time of his torture and his being put to death. So much so that the Indians wanted to eat his heart because they thought that way they would get some of his bravery. He never complained and never cried out. And that was the case really with all of them. They were extremely brave men. Really, if you consider the North American martyrs and how difficult their life was, just that alone would have made them saints and great saints. But then the other thing to consider is how brave they were. They went through a long time of martyrdom. St. Isaac Job, remember, he had one of his fingers chewed off, and a uh, poor uh, Indian lady was forced by a brave to hack with a, with a tomahawk his thumb, his left thumb off, very slowly. And um, 
so their skin was stripped off of them, and at night children would come to them and put hot, burning hot charcoals over them. Every possible, and then they would rip out their nails. Every possible cruelty and torture did they suffer for Christ's sake. And when St. John, and when St. Isaac Job looked at his mutilated hands, he, he, he told our Lord, Lord, I offer this sacrifice up to you for any time, of course he was a priest, that I ever said Mass irreverently or handled you without due devotion. He offered that as a willing sacrifice. And when he got back to Europe, some Protestants had helped him to escape. The Holy Father Urban VIII gave him permission to say Mass, even though he was missing what's called a canonical, a certain finger and, and thumb that you need in order to offer the Holy Mass properly, because he, shot, he said, well, a martyr of Christ should be able to drink the blood of Christ. They were very brave men through incredible sufferings and tortures. And why all of this? For the love of God, children. Remember that baptismal robe we spoke about yesterday? They wanted to give it to as many souls as possible. They had received theirs. And by careful training and strict discipline, when they were growing up and going to school, and then when, when they were in seminary, and by all of their meditations and all of their prayers, they had learned these invaluable lessons. And nothing and no one, no devil or group of devils, could ever conquer them. That's how they won so many souls for Christ. And of course, they saved their own souls too. So today is a great feast day, so we have a special mass that will begin in a moment. And we ask these North American martyrs to shed their graces upon us, because they are our own saints. So at the very least, we should ask today for two graces, children. With a couple of special intentions, of course, I need you to pray for today. Please pray for two of the bishop's special intentions today. One's for um, an individual who's very poor and needs some help. Another's for a troubled family. But the two intentions we should pray for in general today would be for the conquest of the world for Christ, beginning in our own land. And secondly, may I be one of the conquerors. But children, you'll never be able to conquer the devil or soul unless you conquer yourself first. How is that done? It starts with discipline, learning, study, and prayer. Let us be very regular always, shall we, in saying our prayers and offering the little sacrifices of daily life, so that having conquered ourselves in little ways, who knows, we may be able to do some great, glorious, big things for Christ. God bless you. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. Amen.